Today, we'll introduce what the limit point of a set is. These are also called accumulation points or cluster points. There are two definitions that we'll discuss. They are equivalent, and we will prove that. We'll begin with the sequence-based definition of a limit point, and then secondly, we will cover the neighborhood definition, and again, we'll finish by proving that they are equivalent. We'll also see some examples and non-examples of limit points. The idea of a limit point of a set is pretty straightforward. We say that a point X is a limit point of a set A if there's a sequence of points from A, none of which are equal to X, and that converge to X. So a point X from a set A is a limit point if A contains a sequence that converges to X with the stipulation that no terms of the sequence are equal to X. The reason we don't allow the terms of the sequence to equal X is that if that was allowed, then any point from a set would be a limit point. For example, the set containing one. One would be a limit point because I could create the sequence one, 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 one. That converges to one, certainly, and that's pretty useless. So we don't want our sequence to contain the limit point in it, but the sequence would converge to the point. That's what makes it a limit point. And by this definition, it is certainly possible that a limit point of a set would actually not be a member of the set. Before we get into examples, let's just see a picture. Here's a number line. Suppose that this blue part is the set A, or perhaps just some part of the set A. X could be a limit point of this set A, if A contains terms, not equal to X, that make up a sequence converging to X. For example, these could be numbers in the set A, this guy here, and this guy here, and this guy here, they could get closer and closer to X. No matter what epsilon neighborhood you give me around X, there are terms in the set which are that close to the number X. That's what it means for X to be a limit point. And with this idea of any neighborhood around X containing some point that's in the set, but which is not equal to X, this gives us some idea for the second definition. We can define limit points with convergent sequences, or equivalently, we can use neighborhoods. We would say that a point X is a limit point of a set A if every epsilon neighborhood of X intersects the set A at some point other than X. We'll prove that these definitions are equivalent, but first, let's see some examples. Consider the open interval from 0 to 2. Can you think of any limit points of this set? One example would be 0. 0 actually isn't a member of the set, but it is certainly a limit point. We know that 0 is a limit point because the numbers 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on are all elements of this set. And this, of course, makes up a sequence of numbers not equal to zero, but which converge to zero. So by definition, zero is a limit point of this open interval. One would also be a limit point of the open interval. Now, we can't prove that by considering the sequence one, one, one repeating, because remember, in the definition of a limit point, the sequence is required to consist of terms that are not equal to the limit point. So one is a limit point of this set because, for example, there is this sequence that converges to one, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, etc. Let me move the one over. This is a sequence of terms that are not equal to one, but converge to one, and they are all in this set. So one is also a limit point. By the same logic, zero and one are both limit points of this set as well, the closed interval from negative one to one. This interval happens to contain both of those limit points. An example of something that's not a limit point for this set would be two, for example. You can't create a sequence of terms from the closed interval from negative one to 
1 that converges to 2. We can't get particularly close to 2 using numbers in this closed interval. So certainly 2 is not the limit of any sequence in this set, and so 2 is not a limit point of this set. And there's nothing particularly special about these limit points we've pointed out. Every element of this open interval is in fact a limit point of the open interval. It so happens that 0 and 2 are also limit points of the open interval, even though they don't belong to it. However, with this closed interval, again, all of its elements are limit points, but also all of its limit points are elements of the closed interval. There will be more to say about that in later videos. Finally, before we get to the proof of the equivalent definitions, let me just remind you that what we're talking about here are limit points, but again, they're also called cluster points or accumulation points. You might see these terms used in your textbook. All right, let's prove that the two definitions, the sequence definition and the neighborhood definition of limit points, are equivalent. We'll begin by proving that the sequence definition, so there's some sequence of points not equal to x that converges to x, will prove that this implies that every epsilon neighborhood of x intersects the set A at some point other than x. And this is really easy. We just take an arbitrary epsilon neighborhood of x, and since there must be this sequence of points from the set A, but all of them not equaling x. Since there exists a sequence of points that converges to x, well, they get arbitrarily close to x. So there are definitely terms of our sequence that exist in this arbitrary epsilon neighborhood. Let's go a little bit more into detail about that though. So we would say by definition of this sequence of terms converging to x, there must exist some big N such that all terms of the sequence after a certain point are with in epsilon of their limit x. That's by definition of the limit of a sequence. But then that means that for all n greater than big N, for all terms of the sequence past the big nth term, they must be within epsilon of x, which means that they are elements of the epsilon neighborhood of x. And all of these terms are from A and they are not equal to x. So we've shown that every epsilon neighborhood of x intersects A at some point other than x. Pretty straightforward. Let's just recap those final details one more time. Remember, we assumed that there was a sequence of points from A, none of which are equal to x, that converges to x. And it's terms of this sequence that we showed belong to the arbitrary epsilon neighborhood. So we showed that the epsilon neighborhood intersects A at some point other than x. In particular, it intersects A at these terms of the sequence, which belong to A, but are not equal to x. For the second direction, we'll assume that every epsilon neighborhood of x intersects A at some point other than x, and use this assumption to show that there must be a sequence of points from A, none of which are equal to x, and that converges 2x. And this neighborhood assumption is a very strong one. It lets us say this. For each natural number n, let's take an element, say a n, from the intersection of the 1 over n neighborhood of x with the set a, such that this chosen element is not equal to x. And remember, we're perfectly allowed to do this because our assumption was that every epsilon neighborhood of x intersects our set a at some point other than x. So for sure, there's some point other than x in this intersection of the 1 over n neighborhood of x with the set A. This intersection has to contain something that's not equal to x. And so for each n, we are perfectly allowed to take such an element. And it's these terms from the increasingly small neighborhoods of x that give us our desired convergent sequence. Here's a quick convergent sequence proof. We have for epsilon greater than zero, and take big N to be greater than one over epsilon, which we're perfectly allowed to do by the Archimedean principle, link to my lesson on that in the description. So for epsilon greater than zero and big N greater than one over epsilon, we have for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term, since each a n is taken from a one over n neighborhood of x, we have that each term of the sequence must have a distance from x that's less than one over n. But because n is greater than big N, one over n is less 
than 1 over big N. But since big N is greater than 1 over epsilon, 1 over big N is less than 1 over 1 over epsilon, which is equal to epsilon. And so we see that for all terms of our sequence after the big nth term, their distance will be less than epsilon from the desired limit x. And remember, it was our original assumption that guaranteed we could take points from each of these neighborhoods that are not equal to x, but are in the set A. So we have a sequence of terms that aren't equal to x, but are all in A, and that, as we've just shown, converge to x. So we've shown that the epsilon neighborhood definition implies the sequence result. And that's what a limit point of a set is. We say x is a limit point of a set A if A contains a sequence of terms not equal to x that converges to x. Or equivalently, a point x is a limit point of a set A if every epsilon neighborhood of x intersects A at some point other than x. We also call these cluster points or accumulation points. However, the name limit point is nice because it directly really tells us that it's called a limit point because there's a sequence in the set that actually has it as a limit. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and be sure to check out the rest of the videos in my real analysis playlist.